11 of the absolute best in-game Minecraft farms that every world needs. Six of these anybody can build and everybody should build because they are some of the absolute best farms in all of Minecraft. And five of these are only for experts and you likely cannot build them. They're just too OP. If you're looking for even more Minecraft farms to build, I just made a video on the best early game Minecraft farms and the best in general farms that every world needs. So if you're bored and looking for more things to build, those videos are linked everywhere. Where, turns out there's a lot of different farms for a lot of different types of players. Anyway, consider subscribing and let's jump into it. Number one is a guardian farm. Guardian farms are basically the best experience farm in Minecraft. Depending on which one you build, you can get hundreds of levels in just a few minutes. You can send your mobs to the nether. You can kill them all in the overworld. They are super flexible. I'd highly recommend building a guardian farm, even if you don't want the prismarine and all that stuff, because the experience alone and it makes it totally worth it. This is my elite level guardian farm and it gives you 30 levels in 30 seconds and up to around 70,000 items per hour. So as you can see, it's a little bit OP. And next up is a beacon factory and not this kind of little puny beacon factory right here. No, I'm talking a real beacon factory that gives you thousands of wither skulls per hour. A full on nether fortress farm is a great investment to make in your world because it gives you a ton of experience and it gives you 10 tens of thousands of items per hour, such as blaze rods, bones, coal, wither skeletons, magma cream, and even some gold as well. It's an all around excellent farm for the nether mobs, and you really cannot go wrong with a fortress farm or beacon factory. We used to be able to get up to 7,000 Wither Skulls per hour using these beacon factories, but that has since been patched out of the game and removed, but now we can still get 2,700 Skulls per hour using a fairly simple fortress farm. And if you don't feel like going all out, then sure, you can build a tiny one like this. This still gives you 350 skulls per hour, and it's nether only, so you don't need any nether portals or short AFK times. Everyone has an obsession with gunpowder and rockets on Ben Rock Edition, but no one considers the simple solution, a gas farm. A simple gas farm can give you more than 4,400 gunpowder per hour, and they are surprisingly simple and cheap to set up, but this is kind of an in-game farm because it's gas. They are annoying to work with and troubleshoot. So this will give you more than enough gunpowder for any and all uses. You could destroy the entire world after just a single night of AFK. And of course, you can also make endless end crystals with your gas tears. This particular design is a nether only, so you can AFK for as long as you want. You can do a full night of AFK and there's no nether portals or any shenanigans like that. Overall, there isn't much else to say about a gas farm besides it gives you all the gunpowder you ever need. Don't worry about creeper farms. It's just not worth it, man. Chopping wood and punching trees is one of the first things that you do in your Minecraft world, but what if you can make that basically automatic? Well, I present to you the fully automatic Azalea tree farm. This thing will grow a tree for you automatically, completely harvest it, and then put all the logs into a cube maker. And then all you got to do is come in and chop the logs and that's incredibly easy. You can clear out an entire section of logs in just a minute or two, and this removes so much of the hassle of getting wood and Minecraft. This farm isn't even really that complicated to build, but it is a pretty nice thing to have in your Minecraft world, and it's definitely something that I would consider for the end game. As you can see, this farm just continuously bone meals some moss until it gets an azalea bush, and then it grows that into a full-on azalea tree, and completely harvests it, and then just keeps on going about its thing. This is actually a five-type tree farm, so it works for oak, it works for spruce and birch, along with jungle and azalea as well. So it's not just for fully automatic wood, it's for anything that you want, really. This might seem like an odd entry at first, but next up is the tunnel bore for the nether blood last mining. You can get an absolute ton of ancient debris this way, even enough for a netherite beacon if you stay at it long enough. Netherite mining can be kind of a pain, but if you have yourself a tunnel bore system like this, you can clear out an absolutely massive area with a relatively low effort. If you use a TNT efficient design paired with a gas farm, you're going to have yourself a lot of TNT and a lot of tunnel boring for all of the nether resources that you need. This is a great source of gold, 
Quartz, Blackstone, Netherite, and Netherrack as well. Not only that, these tunnel boards are also just great for clearing out large areas for big building projects and other farms. This is probably a little bit excessive, but the OP Enderman farms still exist on Bedrock Edition. However, you need to have two players to use them or be on a simulation distance of six. So it's not great for everyone, but they are super fun to use and also just incredibly, incredibly loud. As you can see, you get an absolute ton of Endermen, up to 200 Endermen, and you only need to AFK for a couple of minutes. This farm is definitely a bragging right. It is super cool to see in the world, not to mention you get a great amount of experience from it as a bonus. With newer mechanics, this entire upper stage can actually be redesigned and significantly simplified. So let me know if you want to see that in a new tutorial. Those are all the mega farms that just about anybody can build and everybody should have in their Minecraft world. But now it's time for the expert only farms. The things that you probably can't build unless you're pretty familiar with how this game works or you got a lot of dedication and time on your hands. So let's start things off with the bedrock block farm. This thing it can technically be built by anyone, but because it is kind of unreliable and lag, it can significantly affect it along with realm issues you are unlikely to get a significant amount of bedrock out of this thing or a usable amount of bedrock so it is definitely an expert level farm not to mention that you're literally farming blocks of bedrock which is super duper illegal and also really useful for our next build also i love the fact that we can farm bedrock blocks on the bedrock edition i mean it's just too perfect hopefully mojang never removes it because like why would they it's amazing there's pretty much no reason to build this next farm besides having an absolute flex in your Minecraft world, and that is a double or quad wither obsidian farm around the end spawn platform. This can give you hundreds of thousands of obsidian blocks per hour. It can be incredibly difficult to build, and you need to farm an absolute ton of bedrock blocks for it. It's also a little bit unstable because, you know, you got two or four withers right underneath your spawn platform, and you need to players or a ticking area to reliably use this thing and get the maximum rates out of it. So you're likely not going to be building this thing, but they are pretty amazing and they are really fun as well because like, what are you even going to use all that obsidian for? I, I still have never found a use for hundreds of thousands of obsidian, okay? It just doesn't exist. And these things have been around for the better part of 10 years as well. And still the only reason to build them is just to flex on your friends. That's the only reason, let's be honest. And now we get into truly the expert level Minecraft farms. This is the 24 stacked raid farm by Pico Nico that I did a tutorial on. And the actual structure of this thing, placing the blocks, that's the easy part. The hard part is stacking 24 individual villages. That way you can have 24 raids going at one time. This thing produces tens of thousands of emeralds per hour. It gives you a ton of experience and it gives you way, way, way too many items as well. It is an utterly ridiculous masterpiece of village technology. If you thought 24 villages was bad, wait until you meet the 48 stacked raid farm. Twice as many villagers, twice as many emeralds, twice as many raids. You can have 48 raids running at the exact same time, and this thing is just an absolutely ridiculous mess of villages, and I would be surprised if anyone ever has actually built this thing in survival mode. There is a good hand few of people who have built the 24 stacked in survival, but I don't think a single soul has dareth touch the 48 stack. If you've built it, Show me pictures in your survival world. I want to see it. It's just insane. 40,000 emeralds per hour. It is just ridiculous. Also, you can see some of the marker blocks and some of the math and geometry that Pico Nico had to do to figure out the exact distances to build everything. This man was working on the 24 stacked and the 48 stacked for literal weeks of his life. 
Like, n no amount of props will ever be enough credit to Pika Nika for designing these things. Absolutely insane. Stacking raid farms is one beast, but stacking iron farms is another beast entirely. This is the 12 stacked iron farm from Pika Nico, and this provides you 4,200 iron per hour. There are 12 individual iron farms in this area, each producing their own 400 and something iron per hour. And it's kind of a pain to build. Not only do you need to build 12 different structures, but stacking the villages in here is its own specific little nightmare. Now, many a great Minecrafter have attempted this build in survival, and many a great Minecrafter have faileth. Stacking villages in Bedrock Edition is possibly one of the most difficult things in the game, especially if you want to have like so many right on top of each other. There have been some advances in the village stacking technology recently, but it's still kind of a mega pain. Luckily, village stacking is a pretty stable mechanic. These farms have been around for a few years now and nothing has really changed. So here's hoping that Mojang doesn't go ahead and break all this stuff because that, that would really, really be rough. So yeah, if you want Java-style rates for iron on Bedrock Edition, this is basically what you need to build. It's not very practical, but it is possible. If you want a difficult redstone challenge, this is the Dark Oak Tree Farm from Zulsin. This is an absolute beast of a tree farm, producing 15,000 logs per hour, and it harvests an entire dark oak tree farm, shuffling it off into four different cube makers. Now, it is a very difficult farm to build, and if it happens to explode because of a lag spike, or if you build it slightly wrong, it can take quite a while to rebuild. When it comes to farms that don't have anything to do with villagers, this is probably the most difficult thing to build on my entire channel, and the tutorial is 57 minutes long. But is it worth it? Well, if you got people to show it off to and flex on, then absolutely. And if you like building with Dark Oak, then absolutely. This next farm might be impossible to build just because it lags out your game. So as you can see, we get 60 FPS not looking at it. And then as soon as we start looking at the Spruce Tree farm, we get 18 FPS. And that is because of pistons. Pistons cause lag. And that was the short version. The full version has a lot more pistons. Now, keep in mind, I have an RTX 3080, so if I'm lagging, just imagine what this would do to a poor little phone. And this is the farm with all the pistons removed. As you can see, pistons are just super laggy on Bedrock Edition. Anyway, this is an absolute beast of a 2x2 two two spruce tree farm that produces up to 58,000 logs per hour. When you're actually standing inside of the farm looking down, the lag isn't that bad because it's just client-side lag from actually looking at the pistons. And I spent like two weeks designing this absolute beast of a farm. So it is a pretty fun thing to build. You probably do not need 60,000 logs per hour, but if you do, then this is the tree farm for you. Keep in mind, if you're playing on a low-end device, uh, yeah, the lag's gonna be a little bit bad while you're actually looking at it, but the lag from running it, surprisingly, isn't all that intense. The build process from this thing isn't actually all that complicated because it's mostly just a repetitive build. It's got four nearly identical sections. It's just a complicated spaghetti mess of redstone, pistons, lag, and a whole, whole lot of logs. And the absolute hardest farm in Minecraft to build, can you guess what it is? It's this stupid little thing right here, aka the demon tree. Mangrove tree farms are an absolute bane of existence, a bane of society, a redstoner's nightmare. These are just the absolute worst thing ever. I'm still working on a tree farm designed for this. You might see it kind of soon. Let me know if you are interested and I'll post one to the channel. But otherwise, those are all the expert Minecraft farms and the farms that you cannot build. Drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys down in the comments. Thank you for watching. And then there was silence.